Hello, welcome. My name is Shia Nafti. I'm an authorized Google trainer. In the next few minutes, we're going to explore various Kubernetes ingress configurations. Let's get right in. We're going to start off by enabling the API service that allows us to work with Kubernetes. Having enabled the API service for Kubernetes, we're going to create a number of Kubernetes cluster. But before we do that, let's ensure we're working against the right project. Next, we're going to set the zone for the first cluster, which is the US. Next, we're going to create the cluster. The cluster will be named hello web-us dash central one dash a we're going to create a one node cluster let's go ahead and configure this cluster to do that, we need access to the credentials of the cluster. So let's retrieve the credentials. Having retrieved the credentials, we're going to create a cluster role binding and specify the cluster role of cluster admin to enable the current user to have admin access to the cluster. And finally, we're going to create a regional IP address which will be used in one of the use cases for services running in the US Central One region. With this done, we're going to switch over to the zone in Europe, which is in the Netherlands. Once we've switched to that zone, we're going to create a cluster in that zone. The cluster will be identical to the cluster we created earlier. The cluster was successfully created in the Netherlands. Let's proceed and get the credentials to this cluster. The credentials have been retrieved. Let's go ahead and create a cluster role binding with a cluster role of cluster admin to enable the current user to have admin access to the cluster. Next, we're going to create a regional IP address, which will be used for services deployed within this cluster. And next, we're going to create a global IP address. Let's move on to the first use case where we're going to configure a service of the type load balancer. We're going to select option three. Let's proceed by selecting the zone we're going to work with. That's the cluster in the US. Next, we're going to retrieve the credentials for the US cluster. The next thing we're going to do is apply the configuration for the deployment. There are a number of things I would like to point out. First of all, you can see the label that will be applied to the pods that will be created from this deployment. You can also see the image. That's the Docker container image. Also displayed is the port of the container that will be running within the pod. 
let's go ahead and apply this configuration for the deployment. Next, we're going to set the regional IP address that was created previously as an environment variable. And finally, we're going to create a service of the type load balancer. We're going to set the IP address of the load balancer to the value of load balancer IP. So here you can see the IP address. This corresponds to the value of this environment variable. The service is of the type load balancer. The incoming port is port 80. The target port is 8080, which corresponds to the container port defined on the deployment. We also have here the selector, app hello, tier web, which corresponds to the labels that will be applied to the pods created using this deployment. Let's go ahead and apply this. By selecting the service type as load balancer, we will also be enabling access to this service from outside of the cluster using this public IP address. Let's go ahead to the console and explore what was created within the Google Cloud Platform. So we're going to go to Kubernetes. Let's have a look at the clusters that we created previously. You can see that we have two clusters, one in Europe and one in the US. Let's have a look at workloads. Currently, we have a deployment. This was deployed to the cluster in the US. Let's click on this deployment. Within the dashboard, for the deployment, we can see the pod that's running. We also have an endpoint of the type load balancer. And here we have the IP address of that endpoint. Let's have a look at services. And you can see the service here. That's the hello web service. The service is of the type load balancer. That's the endpoint. And this service is configured within the cluster in the US into the default namespace. And here we have additional information on the service. Let's go back to the main page for the service. In order to access this application, all we need to do is navigate to the IP address of the endpoint, which is accessible externally. So let's click on this. And there we have access to our application. Let's close this. Let's go to our clusters. And let's move back to the console. What we're going to do now is delete the service that was created. The service is deleted. Let's go ahead and delete the deployment. And the deployment is also deleted. Great. So now we can move on to the next use case. That's option four. In this use case, rather than creating a service of the type load balancer, we're going to create a service of the type node port. You're going to notice that with a node port service, a cluster IP is assigned as opposed to a public IP address. Cluster IPs are accessible only within the cluster. They are not externally routable. And so we need an additional mechanism for forwarding requests to the service from outside of the cluster. And that mechanism is achieved by configuring an ingress, which essentially provides us with a means of defining rules that allow traffic to be routed to services that have been configured within the cluster. Let's go ahead and explore this. Let's start off by setting the zone to the zone in the US. Next, we're going to retrieve the credentials for the cluster in the US. Having retrieved the credentials for the cluster in the US, we're going to create a deployment. You will note 
that this deployment is identical to the deployment configuration we applied previously. The deployment has been applied. This is where this use case begins to differ from the previous use case. Now we're creating a service However, you would note that the type of service we're creating is a service of the type node port. The selector for the service is identical to what we had before, app hello tier web, that corresponds to the labels applied on the deployment. So this service will be able to route or load balance requests across ports created by this deployment. Here you can also see the ports. The incoming port for traffic will be port 8080 and the target port is also 8080 and that corresponds to the port on the container that will be running within the pod. Let's go ahead and apply this configuration to create the service. Next, we're going to create an ingress. Let's have a look at the ingress configuration. The first thing you're gonna note is that there is an annotation and the annotation allows us to specify the public IP address that will be used by the ingress. So here you can see the annotation ingress.globalstaticip name and the name of the IP address is hello web dash global dash IP. That's the global IP address which we created previously. Additionally, you can see here we have the backend service defined. The name of the service is Hello Web and the port is port 8080. Now that corresponds to the name of the service here, which is Hello Web. And you can see the port is port 8080. Let's go ahead and configure this ingress. The ingress is configured. What I'm gonna do now is go back to the console and have a look at workloads. So here we should see the deployment that was created. This deployment is identical to what we saw previously, so we don't need to explore this any further. Let's have a look at the services. And you can see here we have a service of the type node port. You can also see the endpoint for that service. That's an internal IP address and that's the port, which was 8080. This corresponds to the container port. The service was created in the cluster in the US in the default namespace. This service, we can access this service to explore it further. Here, you can see the deployment. You can also see the pod that is running. Here, you can see the incoming port, the target port, and the node pod, which was automatically generated. Let's go back to the main page for services. Okay, as you can see, the ingress is now ready. We have a green icon, a green tick. You have to be patient. This takes about five to 10 minutes. Let's explore the ingress. On the ingress, we can see the IP address of the load balancer, that's the global IP address. We can also see the configuration for the load balancer, the target proxy, and the forwarding rule, as well as the backend service. By the way, we can access a lot of these configurations as well under the networking section. So if we go to network services, load balancing, here we can see the load balancer. So that's the load balancer. You can see it's healthy. Let's click on the load balancer. This displays additional information on the load balancer. That's the public IP address, the global IP address. This is the instance group that is used as the target for incoming requests. The instance is healthy or the group is healthy. We can also have a look at monitoring and select the backend. So here you can see there is no traffic flowing 
to the backend service. What this demonstrates is that traffic from Asia, North America, and Europe will flow to the US Central 1A zone. With that said, let's go back to services and let's invoke this service. So I'm gonna click this public endpoint and you can see we were able to access the application. The next use case is similar to the use case we've just been through, except that we're going to configure traffic to flow over a TLS connection that is a secure encrypted communication channel. We're going to use the cluster in the US. Next, we're going to retrieve the credentials of the US cluster. We're now going to create a self-signed certificate and private key. The certificate and key have been written to the local file system. Let's have a look at that. You can see the certificate and key file here. Next, we're going to create a Kubernetes secret using the value of the certificate and key. The secret is created. Next, we're going to set the global IP address to the environment variable LBIP. Having done that, we're now going to apply the configuration for the deployment. This step differs from what we have done previously. The image we're going to deploy is an image that specifically configured for TLS. You can see here, the image is hello-app-tls version 1.0. Previously, the container image we deployed was hello-app 1.0. The other thing I would like to point out is the fact that the container port is also different. Here, the port is 8443. Additionally, we have a configuration here for the volume mount what we're going to do is mount the secret that we created in the previous step as a secret volume to any pod that is created using this deployment and the path where those files, that's the certificate and key, will be added to within the pod is the etc slash tls folder. We're also going to create an environment variable or a couple of environment variables to enable easy access to the certificate and the private key. And those environment variables will be TLS underscore cert and TLS underscore key. You can also see at the bottom, we're referencing the secret name. That's the secret volume that will be mounted and it will be mounted as TLS within the pod. So let's go ahead and apply this. Next, we're going to create the service. Once more, this will be a service of the type node port. However, let's have a look at the configuration a little bit more closely. You can see here, we have an annotation. The annotation is a cloud.google.com forward slash app dash protocols annotation. So here we're specifying the Kubernetes secret for the certificate and the key and we're also specifying the protocol. Additionally, the incoming port is port 443. The target port is 8443. 8443 corresponds to the container port. Additionally, we have here selectors defined on the service, and these selectors correspond to the labels on the deployment. Let's go ahead and apply this service YAML file. Now we have the service configured. Finally, we're going to configure our ingress. While configuring an ingress, you can see we have a couple of annotations. The first annotation 
ingress.allow HTTP is set to false. So we're going to deny HTTP traffic. Additionally, we'll specify the name of the global IP address. We have a TLS specification here, and this is where we've defined a DNS. So we've used a public service, xip.io. If you're not familiar with xip.io, let's have a look at it. This is a free wildcard DNS, very convenient for demo purposes. Essentially, anything of this format, ip.xip.io, www, or whatever text you choose to provide in front of the IP address, resolves to the IP address. So if we go back to the configuration here, this resolves to this IP address. We also, within the TLS specification, make reference to the secret name, hello web tls And as was with the case before, we also have a configuration for the backend service. The service name is hello web. The service port is 443. And the name corresponds to the service name here, hello web. And the port also corresponds to the incoming port which is port 443. Let's go ahead and apply this YAML file. While this configuration is being applied, let's go to our console. So if I, if I take you to services, you would see that the ingress is being created. While the ingress is being created, let's take a look at the configuration for the deployment. Under the configuration for the deployment, you can see here we have the manage pod. So that's the pod which was created from this deployment. It's running. You can see here the volume that was created. So this is the secret volume that was mounted and it was mounted as TLS. You can see also at the bottom, the configuration for the TLS secret. The TLS secret was referred to as hello web dash TLS and that's a Kubernetes secret. The exposing service was a service of the type node port, and you can see the cluster IP of the service. The incoming port was specified as 443. Let's select the pod. You can see at the bottom, that's the container which is running within the pod, and you can see the image for the container. That's the image, hello-app-tls. So everything looks good. Let's allow a few moments for the ingress to be created. Now we have the ingress ready. Let's explore the ingress. Let's expand the annotation section. Once more, you can see it corresponds to the annotations we saw earlier. The ingress was configured successfully against the backend. Here we can see the backend is healthy. We have here evidence that forwarding rules, target proxy SSL certs were created. The main difference here is that all of these annotations refer to HTTPS we also have a URL map, and you can see the annotation that denies access to HTTP traffic. And we also have a reference to the name of the global IP address. Under the ingress section here, we have a reference to the TLS configuration. We also have a reference to the load balancer, the target proxy forwarding rules, and backend service configuration. Let's access all of these configurations from within the networking section. So go to network services. Here we can see the load balancer. Let's click on the load balancer. We have here the certificate that was generated. So the protocol is HTTPS. And you can see the port is 443. 
That is the certificate. Let's have a look at that. Okay, self-signed certificate. At the bottom, we have a reference to the backend service. That's the backend service. You can see the port. That's the node port. That's the health check. That's the instance group. It's healthy. Let's have a look at monitoring. Let's select the backend. We can see here traffic. Once we start generating traffic, all of the traffic from Asia, North America, and Europe will be forwarded to the cluster in the US. Let's launch our Safari browser. Let's type the fully qualified domain DNS to the service. Let's show details. Given that we used a self-signed certificate, we need to confirm that we're okay to visit the site. Let's click on visit website. I'm going to authenticate. And there we go. So we have access to the service using the fully qualified DNS. So this concludes this particular use case. I'm now going to proceed and delete the service deployment and ingress so we can have a look at the next use case. In the next use case, which is step number six, we're going to make use of a new service that's available on the Google Cloud Platform, that is Manage SSL Ingress. And without much to do, let's get right in and explore how this works. We're gonna start off by setting the zone to the zone in the US. So we're gonna use the US cluster for this um, use case as well. Next, we're going to get the credentials, as has been the case for all of the use cases we've been through. And the next step is to set the IP address to the environment variable. That's the global IP address. You may have noticed that the only case where we used the regional IP address was the first use case where we created a service of the type load balancer. Ever since, all of the services of the type node port where we had to create an ingress, we've been using the global IP address. So let's go ahead and set this environment variable. Having done that, we're now creating a new object, which we haven't seen before. You can see here, we're creating a new kind of object, an object of the type manage certificate. And this object will enable Google to provision the certificates and the keys that are required to create a secure TLS connection. Let's go ahead and apply this YAML file. So now we have the managed certificate configuration applied. Next, we're going to create a deployment. Once more, you're gonna notice that this deployment is similar to the original deployments we created because we're delegating complete responsibility for TLS configuration to Google. So in this instance, we're just focusing on our application. So here we have absolutely no reference to any TLS configuration. We're now back to the hello app image that doesn't have any specific configuration for TLS. The container port is 8080 and the label is app hello tier web. Let's apply that. Next, we're going to create a service of the type node port. And you can see that the selector correspond to the labels that were applied to the deployment. And the port, incoming port is 80, target port is 8080, which corresponds to the container port. This node port service configuration is identical to what we have seen in the past. Let's apply this. And let's take a look at the ingress. So in terms of the ingress configuration, let's examine the annotations. So once more, we've seen the annotation for the name of the static IP address. So that's nothing new there. And the only thing that's new is this annotation, networking.gke.io 
slash managed certificates and was simply making reference to the name of the managed certificate we created earlier. When we created this managed certificate configuration, we specified a name of Hello Web. And here we're making reference to that managed certificate. Apart from that, everything else stays the same. We also have a reference here to the backend service. The service name is Hello Web and the service port is 80. So you can see that corresponds to the port here, 80, and the name is Hello Web. So in terms of configuration, this is very simple and you can see that all of the TLS related configuration has been fully delegated to Google. And all we had to do was create an object of the type manage certificate and add an annotation to the ingress that makes reference to that configuration. Let's go ahead and apply this. Having applied that, we're going to allow a few moments for the ingress to be created. Let's go back to our console. So there we have our clusters. That's the cluster we're using, the one in the US. Have a look at workloads. We have our deployment. No point examining this because it's identical to what we've seen before. Let's also have a look at services. Once more, this service is identical. It's a node port service. You can see the cluster IP there. And this service is configured within the cluster in the US. Again, we've already examined this previously. So we're just going to wait for the ingress to be created. Right, it seems as though the, um, the ingress was successfully created. So we have a green check against the Hello Web ingress. Let's take a look at it. Let's expand the annotation section. So what have we got here? A lot of stuff, right? So we have here the, the manage certificate that was generated. That's the pre-shared certificate. The backend is healthy. We have the relevant forwarding rules configured for us. We have the HTTP forwarding rule, target proxy, SSL certs. This actually corresponds to the pre-shared cert that was specified earlier. URL map. And we have a reference to the global IP address. So everything looks good. At the bottom here on the ingress, we have the global IP address that was created. We also have a reference to the configuration for the load balancer, the target proxy forwarding rules, etc. Let's take a look at this in turn. So I'm going to access this directly from here. That takes us to load balancer. Under the load balancer section, that's the load balancer. You can see we have here the IP address on the port. That's 443 for SSL. And this is the certificate. It's green. So the certificate is configured properly. We have the backend. That's the backend service. That's the instance group that relates to the backend. It's in the US Central 1A zone. It's healthy. Let's take a look at this certificate which was generated for us. Um, it's a global sign certificate. Previously, we had a self-signed certificate. That's a DNS, which we specified for the certificate. Let's go back. On the monitoring, let's select the backend. And likewise, traffic from anywhere in the world will be forwarded to the cluster in the US. Let's return. Is there anything else to see? We could have a look at the target proxy. That's the target proxy. That's the URL map. It's used by this load balancer, or it's used by this forwarding rule, rather. Let's have a look at the forwarding rule, global forwarding rule. That's the external IP. That's the URL map. So everything looks good. Okay, the URL map essentially defines a path to the backend service. So that's great. Everything looks perfect. Let's go back to our Kubernetes service configuration page. 
To test this, I'm going to launch my Safari web browser. That's the URL specifying the domain DNS. And there we go. So we had access to the application. You may recall that previously we had to accept the certificate. In this instance, it's not a self-signed certificate. This is a valid certificate created by Google. I can actually show the certificate here. You can see issued by GTS CA 1D2. And as a result, um, the certificate works and it's accepted by the browser. This demonstrates how easy it is to configure access to a service running within a Kubernetes cluster using the managed SSL certificate service offered by Google. I'm now going to delete the ingress, the service, as well as the deployment and the managed certificate from the cluster so we can proceed to the next use case. We're now in the home stretch, and in this last use case, we're going to demonstrate multi-cluster ingress. This is the only use case where we're going to use both clusters. The whole idea behind multi-cluster ingress is to have clusters in multiple regions around the world and have a single ingress configuration that makes use of a global IP address to forward requests from users around the world to a cluster that is closest to where they are physically located. Let's go ahead and explore how this works. I'm going to select option seven. I'm going to start off by downloading a script. This is a script provided by Google to enable us to configure multi-cluster ingress easily. So let's go ahead and download that script. Having downloaded the script, we're going to create a configuration file. And we're going to make sure this file has access to the credentials for both clusters, the cluster in the US as well as the cluster in Europe. Let's go ahead and add the configuration for the cluster in Europe. There you go. So the cube config file is up to date. Next, we're going to apply the deployment to the cluster in Europe. As you can see from the image which is being displayed, this configuration is identical to what you've seen previously, except that we have added some additional configuration for the readiness probe. Previously, we didn't have this in the deployment YAML file, as well as the liveliness probe. But beyond that, this deployment configuration is identical to what we've seen previously. Okay, we're almost at the end. So let's apply this deployment configuration. So now we have a deployment. Next, we're going to apply a configuration for the service. The service is of the type node port. We have a selector that matches the labels on the deployment. And the target port is 8080, which also matches the port for the container, which is 8080. Let's go ahead and apply. And by the way, you also notice in this instance, we selected a node port. Previously, we didn't specify this and allow the system to randomly assign a node port. Let's go ahead and apply this. The reason we selected a node port is because with multi-cluster ingress, we need to make sure that all the configurations within each cluster is identical. So that means we cannot allow the system to randomly allocate a port because that would obviously result in inconsistencies between the service configuration across the various clusters. So now we have the service configured. 
let's configure the deployment in the cluster in the US. The deployment is identical to the deployment we configured against the cluster in Europe. This is the readiness probe configuration. What's left now is the configuration for the liveliness probe. And once this is defined, we're going to apply this. So let's go ahead and apply this deployment. We're going to do the same for the service. So here we have the service and you can see that the node port we're going to use will be identical. So this service configuration as well as the deployment configuration is identical across the two clusters. Let's apply this. There we go, right? So now we have a deployment and a service configured in both clusters in an identical manner. What we're now doing is creating the YAML file for the multi-cluster ingress. This YAML file makes reference to the global IP address and we have one additional annotation which we haven't seen before and this is the annotation for the ingress class and the ingress class we're going to use is gce-multi-cluster. Apart from this additional annotation everything else should look familiar. Here we have a reference to the backend service, Hello Web, and the service port 8080 that corresponds to this service, Hello Web, and the port, which is 8080. Let's go ahead and create this YAML file. We are now going to use the Cube MCI script. That's the script provided to us by Google for creating the multi cluster ingress to configure a multi cluster ingress for the two clusters across the US and Europe. And we're going to specify the name of the ingress as Hello World. Here we're specifying the configuration file for the ingress, which is the YAML file we created previously. We're doing this within the current project. And we're also making reference to the MCI cube config file that has the credentials for both clusters. Let's go ahead and run this. So here we have the ingress being created in both clusters. It's ensuring that health checks are in place. Also ensuring that the backend services are accessible, creating URL maps, ensuring that the target proxy is available, creating HTTP proxy, creating forwarding rules, and ensuring that the firewall rules are properly configured. So there's a lot that's going on here. Let's um, carry on to the next step. But before we do that, why don't we explore the configuration for the multi-cluster ingress? I'm going to go to the console. So here we have both clusters. Let's take a look at workloads. We have deployments in both clusters. Let's take a look at one of those deployments. This is the deployment in the cluster in Europe. That's the container, Hello App. We have a node port service configured and an ingress. So that looks good. Let's have a look at the services. And you can see here we have two services. That's two services of the type node port. The services are in the two clusters in the US as well as Europe. And we have an ingress as well in the two clusters.
Let's take a look at the configuration for one of the ingress. In terms of annotations, we have an annotation for the instance groups. This is the instance group for the Europe West 4A zone. The ingress class is GCE multi cluster. And we also have here the name of the global IP address assigned to this ingress. Let's explore the global load balancer. We're going to go to network services, load balancing. You can see here that the backends are still being configured. So we're going to allow a few more minutes for the backend to be ready. The backends now appear to be ready. So we have a green tick. Let's launch a Safari browser and see if we can access the application. There we go. So now we have access to our application using the multi-cluster ingress. I'm going to go back to the console. Let's explore this a little bit further. Let's click on the load balancer. You can see here, that's the IP address, the global IP address. That's the URL path. The URL path is to the backend, the backend hello world. You can see both instance groups here, the instance group in the US, as well as the instance group in Europe, both are healthy. Monitoring, let's have a look at the backend. And you can see here, we have two backends. Let's go back to our console and carry on with our exploration. The next thing we're gonna do is create a VM within Europe. So we're creating a VM in the Europe West for a zone. Let's do this. You also notice that we're installing a utility called Siege. We're going to use Siege to generate some load against the multi-cluster ingress or the endpoint for the ingress, which is the global IP. So here we have the virtual machine created in Europe. Let's do the same and create a virtual machine in the US. So there we go, the virtual machine has been created in the US. Let's go back to our console. Let's select the virtual machines. Let's go to VM instances. And you can see here the two virtual machines, one in Europe and one in the US. I'm going to navigate to the Kubernetes engine clusters. Let's open two browser tabs. The first tab will be for Europe and the second will be for the US. Let's go to the tab for Europe. I'm going to select the container logs. And I'm also going to do the same. Select the container logs for the virtual machine running in the US. So we can see confirmation. This is Europe and this is the US. And all you can see here are the health checks. So let's jump to now. And that's just the health check. Let's jump to now. And that's the health check as well. Okay. On the main tab, we're going to navigate to Compute Engine, VM Instances. 
So let's do a test. Let's log in to the virtual machine in Europe. So let's open a, an SSH terminal against this virtual machine. So there we are. Let's run the command siege minus C10. Let's get the IP address. That's the global IP address. External IP. That's the external IP. I'm going to copy that. Let's go back to our Compute Engine page. Let's bring back the that page. And that's the IP address. So essentially what I'm doing here is using the siege command to run, to invoke the endpoint for the load balancer across 10 concurrent connections. Let's go ahead and run this. So that's being executed. And what we're going to do is take a look at the log files and see what happens. So we essentially want to figure out where this traffic is being routed to because the VM is in Europe. So we're expecting the traffic to be routed to the cluster in Europe. Let's go to the cluster in the US and jump to now, see if there are any new entries. So here we can see that all the entries are still just the health check. Let's test this again, right? And let's go to the cluster in Europe and jump to now. And you can see we have here the request, which is slash. And that's what's being generated right now. And you can see intermittently some requests to the health check. So this proves that requests from Europe are being forwarded to the cluster in Europe. Why don't we do this? Let's go back to this terminal. Let's stop this. Let's kill this. I'm going to close this window. So I've terminated this. Let's leave. Let's go to jump to now. And we should be back to where we are. So let's allow a few more moments. And there are no additional requests being sent to this cluster. And you can see all we have now, we're back to just the health check. Let's um, refresh this again, right? And that's it. Let's do the same. Let's go back to our console. Let's SSH into the cluster in the US. Let's run siege minus C10. Let's paste the IP address. Let's run this. So load is now being generated. Let's go back to our logs. This is the log in Europe. Let's refresh this. Jump now. Just the health check. Let's refresh this again. Just the health check. Let's go to the log file for the cluster in the US. Let's jump to now. And there you go, right? So now we have requests being forwarded to the cluster in the US. Let's go back to our shell and let's kill this. Let's close this terminal and let's refresh and we should be back to just the health check request. Let's give this a few moments. Okay, jump to now. Yeah, and you can see, yeah, we have just the health check request. Gonna allow a few more moments and there it is. So this concludes the final use case. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope like me, you learned a lot going through this process. Thank you for making the time to watch this and sticking with it.
and have a nice day. Bye-bye.